The first thing I was going to talk about this evening is the Marvels is almost upon us. And I know you're all eagerly anticipating this movie. Uh, it's been in the making for literally years now, what with all the delays and reshoots and stuff. But uh, we won't go into that too much at this point. But what I will say is it's not looking too good from a box office point of view. In fact, uh, the box office predictions came in and they are currently eyeing, what is this? Yeah, the Marvels is heading for a 75 to $80 million opening, roughly 50% lower than Captain Marvel, the original uh, movie. Wow, uh, optimistic. 72% lower than um, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. And we know how that movie turned out. That was about 470 odd million that it ended up with. Uh, I think they're actually being optimistic with this prediction, to be fair. Um, as you said, Mauler. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ant Man would struggle to get Ant Man money if it came out today. Like, yeah. one mania, I mean. Like, it's, it's like, you know, it's only going further down and down for every day that passes. And for every freaking thing that they throw out, it makes people even more like, uh, <laughs> like well, what's this the is next one? This as well is a movie that cost two hundred and seventy-five million dollars to make. Not that you'd know it from the the VFX, but it did apparently, oh, and awesome. that puts it in the top tier of Marvel films. Not in terms of quality, but in terms of like the sheer cost of making it. Mm -hmm. um, and by my calculations, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but factoring in marketing and distribution costs, you're looking at roughly eight hundred million just to break even on this one. And that's why it's the shortest Marvel movie, or one of the shortest. Yeah. Yeah. 88 minutes. This. Is that true? It's no. sub 90 minutes. No, that's I believe, yeah. I actually believe that it's an hour 45, so 105 minutes, but they tested an 88 minute version. So an 88 minute version was the first version of the film that was, they did, and they did a focus group on it. Uh, my understanding is it scored a 35 out of 100. They, did some reshoots, changed things, got to the longer version, which tested lower at 28 out of 100. So. <laughs> but I bet you like 45% of it is just cats and just Yeah, kittens. sure. They're like, let's just hedge this. Yep. You know that yeah. whatever they're yeah. editing and moving things around, there's just this giant red button that says delete the whole film that they hover over every once in a while. <laughs> I, I honestly think that might have been a worthwhile thing to do in this case. Like they could have Batgirled it. Um, or like, I'm sure it was one of the the pieces of feedback that they got from a test screening. Like, this is the kind of crap that we would dump onto Disney Plus. <laughs> and I thought that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that just seems to describe the movie perfectly. Mm -hmm. It looks like it. It looks like a Disney Plus show. Although, oddly enough, and this might help the movie, it's being released in China, which is um, mm -hmm. not every Marvel movie. It's not a guarantee that every Marvel movie will be released in China. However, in China, the movie has a different title. It's what? Captain Captain Marvel Two. Oh, if you could look look up the you can Google image, uh, you know, find the poster for Captain Marvel Two because in order to understand this movie, right, you have to have one seen Captain Marvel One. That makes sense. You have to have seen Ms. Marvel on Disney Plus. You have to have seen WandaVision on Disney Plus to get Photon's story. Again, so much homework for viewers. I think that. The big reason for the low box office, and I've heard estimates as low as fifty million for the opening. Um, yeah, there was. I think wasn't there one which was saying it was going to get around thirty nine million. Thirty nine wow, million was the initial, one. and then it's it's crept up, right. like, bit by bit. But well, it it's it's a, according to this report from Deadline, it's actually gone down because um, the oh, projection wow. is down uh, from the long leading tracking, which was ninety million. For the well, opening um, weekend, the, so now it's down though. to between seventy-five and eighty million. I've seen other reports that suggested it could be as low as fifty. Yeah, because the the pre-sale for the tickets are way worse than Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. They're like yeah. awful. Yeah, seventy-two percent lower apparently. Yeah, it puts it around the thirty-nine million uh, dollar mark. It, it's yeah, it's, <laughs> it's there's just nothing to recommend it, and I think. I, when you said that, like Photon was that character's name, like yeah. I, that was genuinely the first time I'd heard that. Like I was just <laughs> like, it's, it's Monica Rambo. That's all I knew about her. Right. Yeah. So she's called Photon now, apparently. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, 15 minute more... backstory she had and you have to watch WandaVision for that and then you gotta watch Loki then you watch gotta watch yeah. oh that's right Ant-Man Loki. yeah it, exactly and it's it's kind of uh well we, we've I guess covered it before the idea that like this movie couldn't really rest on Captain Marvel's shoulders by herself she wasn't enough no. to support it mm -hmm. so they tried to dilute the problem by just adding in these two extraneous characters uh, neither of which has any real pull in power. Like, they're not big actresses that are playing them. Uh, they're both based, or they were both introduced in Disney Plus TV shows that not that many people watched in cinema-going terms. Uh, and so there's just no, there's no draw there. Um, they, um, they, they even gave uh, Ms. Marvel away for free. So Ms. Marvel was originally behind the paywall on Disney Plus. Worst viewed out of all of it. Terrible. Mm -hmm. And then they gave it away for free on ABC. And then it was still bad. <laughs> no one tuned in. <laughs> Terrible yep. even when they give it away for free. So they anyway, I, I don't, yeah, and I don't even know if it was necessarily a bad show because I never watched it. But um, it just seems like no one cared about it. And there wasn't much to pull people in because it was a teeny bopper kind of show. Um, if you were like yeah. 15 years old, you might find something there but like otherwise there was just nothing to get people invested in it um mm -hmm. and there was no there was no particularly big names involved in it either um i'm just looking at this report from deadline actually saying <laughs> that uh, some people critique that the, the uh, promotional campaign was launched much later than other marvel campaigns uh which would typically drop at least 12 weeks in advance because they were hiding the trailer i think they were kind of embarrassed by it along, okay, didn't we? Uh, it was like it yeah, I mean, I guess part of this problem comes down to the strikes and stuff as well. Like, they can't do that much promo work for it. Mm -hmm. um, some sources are also telling them that audiences aren't connecting with the Captain Marvel IP um, <laughs> and that the other two characters in the franchise, Ms. Marvel um, and, uh, sorry, WandaVision, um, they, they, those were the shows which introduced those other two characters, neither of which was watched by that many people. Um yeah, funnily enough, we're also told that the Marvels is well below the top performing MCU titles amongst men under 35. Who could have predicted Shocking. that? <laughs> I know. The, the biggest movie going audience doesn't like your movie. You probably I would have thought that men would love seeing men get humiliated on screen. I just don't understand it. You know? Don't men love doing that and going don't and paying money it. for that? It's funny. We, I, I feel like we're all feeling very smug right now because it's like finally they're facing the consequences of all their actions and things we've all been talking about for years now that you're going to alienate your audience into the ground. And that's exactly what's happening with this movie. Yeah. yeah. So it's, funny. it's, uh, you know, ultimately reality does come at you pretty quick, um, particularly when money's concerned. And this seems to be the position they're in now. Um, there's ultimately going to be no hiding that final box office tally. You know, they, they got away with the first movie because it made over a billion dollars. Can't deny that. You know, it's, um, you can deny, you could uh, debate the reasons for it, where it was situated in the franchise. Um, I, I saw a video from Dave Cullen today, which summed it up perfectly. It's like Captain Marvel shouldn't have been introduced in phase three. They should have waited until after the Infinity Saga. She was crowbarred in. Because they knew that the the excitement was at such a level for the end of this this uh, big um, cinematic journey that they've been on for the past ten years that they could launch basically any character during that time and it would be a huge hit. Um, but realistically, she didn't have anything to do in Endgame. She was essentially nullified in that. No, but uh, Ke and Rick Kevin Feige told us it was really important. She played a really important part. Come on, <laughs> you calling Kevin Feige a liar? Well, I mean, there was <laughs> there was all those there was all those rumors, weren't there, about two different versions of the film? One that had yeah. uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Captain Marvel in it, and, a, and mm. the other version which had as little as possible, and that's the one they went with. Um, you could you could question the reasons for that, but I think we know why. Um, they knew, I think, even back then, the character was not popular with fans, um, mm -hmm. however much money the film might have made. I don't know if it's yeah. so much the character as the casting. I think Brie Larson is just incredibly unlikable. You could see that character or, or a version of that character working with a different actress 
say someone more likable, like a Katie Sackoff, right? Mm -hmm. Or you recast, it's a different, it's a different tone, but there was a tremendous amount of tinkering with Endgame and a lot of things talked about behind the scenes. Obviously it came out that um, John Favreau was really upset. They had told him like, look, a uh, Tony Stark, the character is going to die. He's going to sacrifice himself and die in it. He, and Favreau argued it was a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Don't do it. And of course they write off the futures of Steve Rogers and, and, you know, Tony Stark, I thought, and looking back, it's a huge mistake. They even toyed with the idea because I knew someone who worked at Pow Entertainment at the time, Stan Lee's company. And who told me that one of the ideas they talked about was Captain Marvel going that basically the Avengers are defeated. So they are defeated. They lose, right? Which is the vision that Tony Stark sees Captain Marvel goes back into the past and plucks younger versions of them. And they're, and they recast the original Avengers. Ooh. This was, this was an idea that was talked about. And um, even if you watch nerd Roddick, um, he was talking about, there's that book about Marvel that just came out. And they mm -hmm. talk about how they want to recast Tony Stark and Steve Rogers and get that happening as soon as possible because they realize, hey, these legacy characters really do have a lot of value. So. I, I just I don't see how you can recast them. Like I, <sighs> I mean James Bond. How many James Bonds have we had? How many Batmen have we had? Like you but could that's... take. I mean, it can you. I think it's possible it would be a different take, but I think what you'd have to do is tell different stories, like tell a Captain America story from World War II or see, in the 60s. You know, yeah, something. I mean, see, yeah, as far as like the whole killing off Tony Stark thing goes, I is it was my understanding that Robert Downey Jr. kind of wanted out by that point. He'd been doing it for right. 10 years and he was kind of tired of it and he wanted to move on to other things. So I don't think it was necessarily all... Um, you know the studio or whatever mandating this stuff it was partly the actors that were you know getting ready to move on i think um scarlett johansson was ready to do move on to other stuff i think chris evans was probably ready to go as well that was probably a, a mistake on his part really because he's not done much since then <laughs>